Okay, we're looking at what I've called diplomacy. And of course, we start with a song. My Lord is so good. He's so good. My Lord is so good. He's so excellent. My Lord is so good. He's so good. My Lord is so good. He's so excellent. Okay, <laughs> we're looking at telling it as it is. You know, looking at just looking at diplomacy, and now we can go about it. Um, this is really an account about the rebellion by Absalom, and of course, you know, he was left hanging. Yet, you know, during the battle, his head was stuck, you know, in a tree, and you know, some of the soldiers of David arranged and they killed him. You know, but they knew how the reaction of the father, what the reaction of the father would be, because they had told them they should not harm the young man. And so it was now time to send the news to David. So it's a very interesting account. And they sent, the, they sent one messenger. Somebody else was insisting that he also wants to take the message to David. So eventually he was given the go-ahead. So let's see how he went about his duty. So the watchman said, I think the running of the first man is like the running of Ahima, the son of Zadok. And the king said, he's a good man. He will come, he comes with good news. So Ahima called out and said to the king, all is well. Then he bowed down with his face to the earth before the king and said, blessed be the Lord your God, who has delivered up the men who raised their hand against my Lord the king. Then the king said, is the young man Absalom safe? Ahima answered, when you have sent the king's servants and me your servant, I saw a great tumult, but I did not know what it was about. <laughs> <laughs> Ahimaaz was very diplomatic. He knew the king's son was dead, but he didn't want to be able to break the bad news, you know. Uh, and of course, we also have another account when the Lord, you know, was making some comments, and you can see the interpretation of the comment. Matthew twenty-one verse forty-three. Therefore, I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken from you and given to a nation bearing fruits of it. And whoever falls on this stone will be broken, but on whoever it falls, it will grind into powder. Now, when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard this parable, they pe perceived that he was speaking of them. You know, there's a place for them for diplomacy. We don't always have to say it the way it is. You know, and then there's a place for direct confrontation. If you look at Matthew 23, verse 13, but woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for you neither go in yourselves, nor do you allow those who are entering to go in. So basically, what this boils down to is that we need the Spirit of God to lead us so that we know when it is time to confront and when it is time to be diplomatic. And one of the best examples that comes to mind is, for example, if your wife, if your wife were to ask you, hey, darling, have I had it on? Have I had it with? <laughs> you know that the diplomacy is required in answering that particular question. <laughs> 